Time for twins part. It's going to be a damn good show. Yeah. I mean, did you guys see that clip recently of uh, Joe Biden put on the MAGA hat? I yeah, saw that yeah, shit. I saw that. I saw you that. see the hey, whole clip? Hey, do you got that, Joe? Yeah. That was crazy. The whole clip. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And when I first saw the picture of him putting on the hat, I was like, dude, this guy's lost. <laughs> right. And then you watch the whole clip, and you're like, uh-huh. he's actually like engaging and having fun with them. Right. right. I was like, that's old Joe Biden. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He was mm-hmm. actually didn't seem that lost. He knew what he was doing. He was right. playing with the crowd and having fun with them. Yeah. Like, that's the Joe Biden we kind of knew. Sure, all huh? Yeah. Remember your name? You, you can, can you make that bigger, Joe? Sure, old Yeah, I know, man. I'm an old guy. <laughs> and you're an old person. Uh, I know you wouldn't know about that. What? I'm being old. Oh, I know. All right. I'm a young timer. Huh? <laughs> he reminds me of the guys that grew up with the in the neighborhood. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm the only one. Look at those kids back there. There you go, man. I, got, I, need, I need that hat. You want my autograph? Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. I ain't going that far. Yeah. I can't even do a selfie. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny that now that he's no longer running for president, he totally yeah. don't give a shit. He don't give a shit. Now it's like, all right, yeah. he actually, he was kind of likable back in the day. Yeah. And you start to see glimmers of that. Yeah. You kind of feel bad for him because he totally got, it was totally a coup. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He, he keeps saying surprised. we the biggest threat against democracy is them. Yeah. 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 Nobody and voted for her. No. Yes, she's running. She was le- most unlike when she actually ran for president. She was the first one to drop out. She polled at 1%. How now crazy she- would it be if he came out and he's like, oh, like they screwed me. It was a coup. I didn't want to leave. I never liked I'm going I'm to vote for t- Trump. <laughs> <laughs> that would be awesome. Yeah. How wild would that be? <laughs> hey, what do you think about RFK Jr.? I, Been on stage with Trump. I think he's interesting. Yeah. He's a Democrat. Mm hmm. He's uh he's a the one and di- only liberal, yeah. Left. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, he's a true liberal. Yeah. Um, so I don't agree with a lot of the stuff he says, right. but I think he's honest and genuine in what he's trying to do. Mm-hmm. So I think that's the most important thing right now. Mm-hmm. He's like, do, do the people that you're listening to or you're voting for, are they at least honest and genuine? And do they actually believe what they're saying? Right. Mm-hmm. I think that needs to be the new standard of what right. we're looking at. Right. Because everyone's lying to you. Everyone in mm-hmm. media is lying to you. All the politicians are mm-hmm. lying to you. Right. So if they're honest, at least you understand what they're doing. Mm-hmm. I think he cares about the issues he cares about. And although I don't agree with, say, his stance on abortion, or I don't agree yeah, with flips, his stance he on... He didn't flip-flop on that multiple times. Yeah, he flips a lot on certain things. Yeah. But he cares about health. Right. He cares about the weaponization of the FDA and the USDA and things like this. He cares a lot about censorship. Mm-hmm. He cares a lot about, um, you know, things like this. Mm-hmm. So I'm all for that. I like that he's on this side. I think that's a game changer. Yeah. But still going to be close. It's still going to be close. I yeah. think before he endorsed Trump, I think it was, I wasn't as big of a fan. Right. Because I think you had a binary choice and mm-hmm. I felt like he was taking more Trump voters than Kamala voters. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 But now that he's on the side, yeah, I think it's a good thing. Um, when uh, Vivek was running for president, I really liked Vivek. Mm. And I really liked Tosi Gabbard too. Mm. Um, especially Tosi because she came from the Democrat Party. Um, when I looked at Vivek when he was running, he pulled very, very bad. Mm. And I was like, this guy says everything right. He's perfect. He sounds like AI. I was mm. like, why is this dude not polling better? Mm. I think he should have been Trump's VP pick or mm. Tosi Gabbard or, you know, somebody that's not white. Well, I think uh, he's just, um, I mean, even that white lady said Ann Coulter because mm-hmm. he's not white. Mm. Yeah. I, we brought that up to him yeah. when we interviewed him. He got a little uncomfortable. He got uncomfortable, <laughs> and he said, no, that's not what it is. Um, I, and I was like, what I is- told him, dude, if you had a blonde ponytail, <laughs> blue eyes, you had 1776 across your face, you'd be Trump's VP pick. Do you think yeah. he'd be as popular if he was white? 
He'd be more popular. You think? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there are a lot of people that are saying the same thing and it's not as actually interesting. Mm -hmm. You don't think that the colored part of it makes it more interesting? No, I think he pulled uh, so bad because he's not white. You know why I say this? Mm. I, I see a lot of people out in town. They said, I said, man, what do you think about that for Vic, man? Mm. They said, man, uh, I don't trust him. Mm. And every last white person told me this. Mm. He sounds too much like Obama. <laughs> yeah. I was like, wait a minute. The guy's not even black. He's Indian. <laughs> and he's a Republican. Why y'all keep comparing him to a black liberal? Mm. Yeah. That's a black what, progressive. A black progressive liberal. Uh, I, I was talking to a gas station guy. There's a gas station right by my office. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I was there getting coffee. And every once in a while, we'll talk politics. Mm. Random guy. Indian guy. And one day I asked him, like, what do you think about Vivek? Mm -hmm. And Indian guy, he goes, who's that? <laughs> I said, what do you mean who's that? He's Indian. He's yeah. running for president. Right. Right. He's like, why? <laughs> like, yeah. you, you don't want to vote for him? He's like, no, he's Indian. <laughs> The Indian guy didn't want to vote so for the Indian, Indian guy. the guy's racist too, huh? Indian guy's like, why would I vote for an Indian guy? <laughs> right. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that has a lot to do with it. Mm. I don't think a lot of people would not admit it because if you make him his VP or actually say you nominate him as a Republican Party and during the election we have a poor turnout, that will confirm everybody's suspicions on the left. Because well, that's, that's, that's all they say. Everybody on the right is racist. I would mm. say it's not racism. It's a bias. It's just a bias. Yeah. I liked Ben Carson. I love Ben Carson. Yeah. I, th I thought he would have been a really good VP pick. Yeah. I was a huge fan of that potential pick. Mm -hmm. um, kind of a little sad that didn't happen. JD's good too, but... JD's awesome. Yeah, but I yeah. really liked Ben Carson. I think that made a lot of sense. Right, because he's not going to run for president next. Yeah. yeah. There's no threat, and he's like so even keel and mm -hmm. helps balance off Trump. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, so if anyone that says Trump is too radical or he's too in your face, then you have... You know, Dr. Ben Carson, who kind of creates that balance, and pe a lot of people would think, okay, like, I don't trust Trump, right. but I trust Dr. Ben, yeah. so I can get behind this. I yeah. thought that might have been a good move, but, yeah. you know, what do I know? You know what will piss me off? Uh, if Ben Carson runs for president, and I ask people out tell, what do you think about Ben? Man, I don't trust him. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like Obama to me. <laughs> I'm like... <laughs> Maybe he'll get Vivek. <laughs> yeah. do, do, you like, do you like Vivek? I'm, I'm on the fence. Do the yeah. You I'm don't the trust fence. him either. Huh? I don't he trust sounds him. like Obama, right? <laughs> I don't trust him. He sounds too much like Obama. You know? Yeah, some people say he's like he's too perfect. Yeah, his his questions are uh he's too well spoken. I think I think there's something about he someone sounds that's scripted. Too people polished say he sounds too scripted. Yeah. And he understands technology. You mm. know what people are thinking about. If you have access to algorithms, mm. you have understanding what the conversations are. Mm -hmm. That's really easy to just say exactly what people want to hear. Right. I think you have to have a little flaw in your right. argument because mm -hmm. it makes you more human. Mm -hmm. For example, makes you sound genuine. Yeah. A lot of comedians, when they go up on stage, they could maybe not stutter ever. They don't, um, they don't have ahs. They don't mm -hmm. do these things, but you add them intentionally. Right. It makes you more relatable. Right. If you come off too polished, it looks fake. Right. You know, it's almost like that where the human psychology wants people that are a little more relatable. Mm -hmm. And JD Vance, when he goes on interviews, he'll say, like, dude, you know, mm -hmm. like, bro, right. you know. He's right. very likable. And, and he's people very... like that because right. it's relatable. Right. That's a good point. Yeah. 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 But polished. I think that's polished. Mm -hmm. And that takes time. I yeah. think if he if he decides he's going to stay in politics longer. Yeah. Do you think uh, Vivek has a, a, a future with the Republican Party? I, I guess it depends on whether or not he wants to get involved. Like, he's done very well for himself. Mm -hmm. He doesn't have to. Yeah, he's yeah. a billionaire. So. You know? Yeah. So it really depends. I think people are really sketchy of people that just show up out of nowhere. Right. And all of a sudden, like, hey, I'm going to run for president and I'm a billionaire. I'm like, okay, like, really? Yeah, where, right. where did you get your money? Oh, he worked at a pharmaceutical company. Oh, yeah. oh fuck you. Yeah. But if he <laughs> sticks around for four, five, six years. Yeah, it's going to take some time. Yeah, six years to mm -hmm. eight years later, he's mm -hmm. like, okay, I'm going to run for president. And right. you've been a part of the process for eight years. Mm -hmm. Then now it's okay. I know you. I trust you. You've been around. You didn't come out of nowhere. Right. Uh, we have an understanding of what your real policies are, who you are. I think you have to think long game. Mm -hmm. I think that the Democratic Party thinks long game. They've been prepping Gavin Newsom to be run for president He's in so four or eight years forever. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But Back to your point, he is so fake. So fake. Yeah. yeah. But Democratic Democrats feel like they know him. Mm -hmm. And they know his ups. They know his downs. They know that he, they lied to you during COVID. But then he kind of apologized and they're over it. Mm -hmm. You know, like it gives you time to go through that. 
Yeah. And with Vivek, you didn't have that time to kind of right. learn. Mm-hmm. I think that was the biggest problem for RFK also. Right. Yeah. He just, out of nowhere, he's like, I'm running for president. Yeah. Right. like, okay, I kind of like his po- policies. Mm-hmm. What if the independent candidate was campaigning for five years? By the time election season comes around, you're like, right. all right, I kind of understand him. I like him. I can put my support behind him. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't feel like a throwaway vote. Yeah. Right. You know? So I think that's part of it. If you want to get new into politics, I think you just have to get involved a little bit sooner. People, mm-hmm. presidential cycles start one year before, but it's mm-hmm. a really important decision. Mm-hmm. You got to be in the public eye longer now. Yeah. What do you see happen in this country if Kamala Harris becomes president? I think you and I are going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to Thailand. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to get you before that. Uh, they're tracking you. I think that's a huge concern. Yeah, I have a... a a lot of people think if Kamala wins his presidency, a lot of conservative media is going to get shut down. YouTube, yeah. they're going to clamp down on everybody. And yeah, I think to totally change your content. I think that's a lot of it. You know, they've been tracking who says what, who is spreading certain rumors, and they'll figure out, okay, that was not true, that was not true. Mm-hmm. And the reality is, even if we have our best intent on putting out information, mm-hmm. you're only as good as the data you're given. Right. And right. we're given flawed data. So therefore, our takes can't be perfect. It's impossible. Right. Because we have flawed data to work with. No one ever tells us the true data. Same thing goes for CNN, Fox News. They're not perfect. They, they pay millions of dollars in lawsuits. They can't be. Mm-hmm. And they put out a retraction in a paper three weeks later, hidden on page 54. No right. one ever reads it. And they're like, oh, yeah, but we apologize. It's okay. Right. We don't have that liberty. Right. You know, and I think they're keeping tabs on everybody. Mm-hmm. They're, they have a database of who's good, who's bad, who's been compliant, who's been helpful who is willing to be compliant if given a little bit of pressure. Mm -hmm. And if you've shown that you are kind of anti-establishment, I think you're going to have a hard time. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, Your podcast is blowing up. What if you did to insulate yourself from something like that happening to you? Just always tell the truth. Yeah. You know, like don't, don't take money. Don't, do weird deals. Yeah, don't take <laughs> don't take don't the four hundred thousand a month. video. Yeah, you just can't do it. Yeah, because you never know. Right now, they are keeping tabs on everybody. I think you just have to be as honest and genuine as possible. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. Mm-hmm. But at least no one told you to do that, and you are acting in your best interest. I think in the long run, people who are honest and genuine will win the social media and content game. Mm-hmm. Because as everything, if all content becomes more digital, everything becomes more AI that the people who are honest and genuine and more analog will win because value is in scarcity and analog people will be scarce. Mm -hmm. So I think that's just the long-term play. It's not the best short-term play because right now if you create AI closed of yourself and you put out unlimited content information, like you'll probably make money now. But I think it's harder to survive long-term. I think AI is going to be used as a weapon against us. Yes. So... Okay, just, fuck it, let's just walk out of here. <laughs> <laughs> just go down with the ship. It's fine. <laughs> Put on a dress. Yeah. Start doing uh, yeah. content for them. Right. All you gotta do is one. Just one, one, <laughs> one episode hey, in I a just, dress. I, I go work for Russia, man. <laughs> <laughs> they go give me four hundred thousand dollars video. I'm fine. I still can't get over that. <laughs> that is crazy. What would you have did if they offer you four hundred thousand dollars? No, I can't do it. Yeah. I, I, I'm I, like, wait a minute. Where is, you're going to pay me $400,000 for one video? <laughs> Where's this money coming from? That's yeah. the first question I would ask. Yeah. I think it's a really slippery slope. Yeah. You know, So I'm in the camp of say no to everything, mm-hmm. which is not the best business decision mm-hmm. because, dude, like we want to make money. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But I think, I think this tenant media thing shows that anyone that took it, even just a little bit, everyone's kind of worried, right? Yeah. Like, shit. I, don't, I have no idea where that came from. These people are not <laughs> sleeping at night, huh? Yeah, you know? I mean, especially in this, this era, what they did to Trump. Trump hasn't even broken the law. He's no. been convicted of 34 felons. You're taking $400,000? Yeah. You're not you got to be guilty of something. <laughs> I would not have. You got to be careful. Yeah. It's not easy. It's not easy because, you know, sometimes you do th- stuff that you say things because you agree and you take the money. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. And you're like, oh, but it's something I agree with. And I, I, I get that. Mm-hmm. But, man. You never know. And this proves it. This shows yeah. that you have to be careful. Yeah. Hey, man, I don't feel so good, man. What's wrong with you? I'm embarrassed to tell you. I'm just going to tell you. I ain't took a shit in like two weeks, man. Ain't you taking your OH? Your optimal human? I thought we ran out of it. Man, here, take this. Here's some right here. Take it. Get it up in you. Drink that.
Get that probiotics, mm. that artichoke. That is good. That apple powder. All those essential nutrients that get your intestines right. Yeah, get them intestines right. Get it all up in you. Mm. Swallow it. There you go. Why are you drinking it like it's uh, Kool-Aid or something? Just well, you it. made it with cold water. I'm over here getting brain oh, freeze. <laughs> What's good with cold water? It's like a smoothie. Oh, man. I feel something move. Oh, man. Go to OptimalHuman.com forward slash Hawk Twins and now try Optimal Human for free today.